My name is David Shanks, and I am the CEO of Penguin Group US. Well, to, to, to form a, uh, a digital company or to make a digital company out of, out of a very strong Penguin uh, print company uh, has been very challenging. Uh, you know, because there have been sort of false starts in the past on what the future of, of publishing was going to be. If you recall, I don't know what it was, 15 years ago when the, the interactive CD-ROM came out, that was going to be the future of publishing. And a lot of publishers, us included, put you know, serious money into it. We put probably less than others, but we all wound up losing money and it turned out to, to, to be no market. So this time around, everybody went sort of cautiously into, this, into uh, the ebook business. And, um, and I think that it's starting to pay off now, the, the, the cautious approach. We saw that there was a market, you know, th th there was a, a, an affordable reader uh, that, that was out, and now there's multiple readers. Uh, so I think the business is starting to really take off. So I'm glad that we took a cautious approach. Uh, well, I, I think that it's, it's all about the content anyhow. I mean, right now, you know, you can see that there are online companies now that are getting into content because they're worried about content. So, so what, the fact that we still have things that people want to read, um, I, I think, is, is going to be our, 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 still our, our major advantage. And um, uh, I, I think you can do both. You know, we have to, my job as the CEO is to not throw the baby out with the bathwater. So we still have, you know, <laughs> You know, 80 percent of our of our volume, 85 percent, whatever it is, is still print. You know, th and that's that's turning on the lights and paying my salary and playing for our booth in this in this show. Um, so so we c can't just devote all of our attention to to ebooks. And the way that some of the of the mainstream media is is representing ebooks it's like it's 100% of our of the business all of a sudden and it isn't and it probably and it certainly i think will never be 100% of the business um, you know and then so then it, it starts to give you a whole lot uh, more challenges in that in that where people are saying oh you know you can do away with your warehouse and you can do this and you can do that well if you think that ebooks are never going to be 100% of any one title let's say unless we start to publish or until we start to publish e only but but for books that start out in paper we're going to still have the same amount of of SKUs that we <clears throat> that we have only it will be x percent less so we still have all those same problems and and we can't take our eye off of that off of that ball and yet on the other hand you're right we have to be agile enough to not let somebody sneak in and you know and take our business so we have been protecting ourselves as best we can uh, for a, a long time now, with with, with, with the rights that, that we, we have acquired, and we feel that we're in in a better position than some other of our competition who have had who have had issues in that area. So, so I think we've got really smart online people who are uh, going to be able to move our business uh, forward. We have, more importantly, people who can adapt who are really. Um, uh, uh, great in their particular fields who can adapt to selling books online or digitally um, the whole social networking area all of those all of those ways of the, the traditional ways of promoting books as they tend to to shrink and this area tends to become much more important I think we have really smart people who can adapt um, to that business so I, I think you can do both and and that by not strictly concentrating on that area, you're not hurting yourself particularly. I mean, if you were a startup ebook company, then obviously that's the way you would go. But if you're trying to protect, you know, a billion dollar company, um, you know, as you transition, it's a whole different way of looking at the business. I think every publisher has to look at, look at their content and, and figure out how else they can sell it other than in print. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't have authors. I mean, you know, an author is going to want to be at a place that can, can push his brand in whatever the, the current format is. So, so sure, I mean, I'm not, but I think you'd find most 
of, of the large publishers, and certainly at Penguin, we are uh, looking at every form that we can outside of print. So we are in, in the audio, we are in the app space, you know, we're, wherever the, the space goes, we're in, you know, to a small extent to gaming and, you know, so, so I, I think that, um, that our authors would expect us to, to broaden out their brands uh, and if we don't, that they'll, either they or their agents will go find somebody who will. Well, one of the things you've done that I think is really interesting for authors is you've created a book country. How does it fit in with the Penguin mission? All right. The lifeblood of any publisher is finding new talent. You know, so, so there is a traje trajectory for, for all, most authors, you know, where they, they're starting out, you focus the conversation around, around them, um, get people talking, and then their careers take off. Now, obviously, they have to be good writers to start with, but, but the, the marketing of a new author is, is really important. So we saw through um, some of these, um, uh, like the, the Amazon uh, new uh, author uh, contest that we, that we do with Amazon, that, that we can find authors like that, develop them, and, and have them s c contribute significant revenue to our company. So, so we sort of said to ourselves, well, what about using this forum where, where we, can, we can make this the, the most comfortable place for a new author to come? We let other authors help them uh, develop their craft. Uh, and that, and then, and then let readers come on and comment on what what they uh, like about their books, and then so create a almost a, a, a reading or an author social network where then the more positive reviews that you get, the higher up on the list you get, and then at the top of that list we'll we'll start to to look seriously at those people and say, aha, here's our new uh, crop of of, uh, of potential. Uh, best-selling authors. Let's now give this the cream of the crop, if you will. Let's give them broader distribution in, into our uh, electronic uh, areas. Um, put them on all of the places that we're doing business, all the agents that we're doing business with um, in the ebook space. And then, <clears throat> if if that proves successful, then we can make the jump. <clears throat> excuse me. We can make the jump to. To, to paper as well, to print as well. So, so it was. It was sort of <clears throat> in in our project before we launched it. We were calling it the farm team because it was a, sort of a baseball analogy. Uh, you know, you you work your way up until you get to the majors, right. and and we and that <clears throat> you don't win it too many World Series if you have a lousy farm team. So that's sort of how we how we came upon the idea for Book Country. It's a lo it's a, a loaded question to talk about book marketing. But I, I am interested in the whole showroom uh, aspect. Uh, I think that we need to have bricks and mortar stores, um, and and that we'll never know the effect, uh, you know, the complete effect of of um, uh, of how many ebook sales are converted by people going into a brick and mortar store, looking at the book, and then deciding either then or elsewhere that they're going to buy the book as a as an ebook. But I think the reason that people go into bookstores, for whatever the reason is, from they want to meet somebody of the opposite sex and this is a, a, a sort of a safe place to go and, and to appear relatively intelligent as the, or, or to, for the, the actual um, hand selling that is done in a border store, Barnes & Noble or Independent, saying, you really like this book, that effect, if that goes away, I think we would sell fewer e-books. Not only print books, we'd sell fewer e-books. So it's, it's really uh, um, it, urgent, I, I think, for the publishers to come up with a way to keep brick and mortar stores out there for that showroom effect. Um, people still like to, they might want to read, but they like to touch and feel. And and my, my boss, John Makinson, in a recent interview, said something that I thought was pretty interesting, where he was talking about book readers versus book buyers. And, and he 
classify a book buyer as somebody who wants to keep it or give it to a you know or give it to as a gift to, to someone and a book reader who's just someone who wants to consume so the book readers obviously are the huge portion of the ebook readers but they still need to have whatever impetus whatever the marketing is that that sells them on consuming that book I, I think that the touch and feel aspect, the point of sale aspect is still a very large part of their choice.